Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Today we're going to take a look at the Dig Octa system again, and in particular how to stack the boards, because both the power boards and the, uh, the brain boards can both be stacked. But although I have articles about it, I thought a little video explaining how to do this would make sense. Well, I don't have the time this week to prepare a perfectly scripted video like the other videos. If you haven't watched those videos about the introduction to the system, introduction to the brain board, and introduction to the power boards, I invite you to do that first. But if you did see those, let's uh, let's just stack some boards together. First off is the well, power five. Power boards can be stacked with themselves or with brain boards and well, of course, then vice versa, and that also goes for the brain boards. With the Power 5, you get several things included in your delivery. I have a page already up about that, what should be included, but let's go over it real quick. You get, uh, well, everything that's soldered on the board, of course, three input fuses, and I won't go into why these are 25 amps right now, but that is correct, although it says 20 amps here. There's reasons for that. Uh, then it comes with half uh, 5 amp fuses and half 10 amp fuses. The reasoning behind that is this is a 50 amp total board and 5 amp fuses are ideal for edge injections and 10 amp fuses are ideal for middle injections. So that way you can space them out a little bit. It also helps in regards to heat and stuff like that. Anyway, we're, we weren't going to go in that. So with a power 5, you get two baggies. You get a bag with the pluggable terminals and these are all uh, special uh, with with uh, phillips head screws so during the video i'm going to be using two screwdrivers these are both uh, phillips head ph1 and maybe this is ph2 I'm not sure actually but this is all you need because everything in the system uses the same type of screw head anyway you get 14 of the green ones and one of the orange ones for this port here and you get a second baggie, and that second baggie has some standoffs in it and screws. Now, the first thing we are going to do is configure this board in what I'll call desktop mode. And that is if you just have a single power board and you want to use that. We'll talk about brain boards and all kinds of stuff and stacking later. So for now, let's see what's included. You get four of these long standoffs with screws here. And you get four of these short scrandoffs with screws here, and then you get four screws. Now, all power boards have the same layout in regards to screw positions, and I'll, I'll show you an overlay too. But they basically have four M3 positions for stacking and mounting power boards, and then they have five M2.5 positions. And all of them are ground except this middle one. This one has a positive voltage on it. Now it's completely protected from all sides and there's basically no way to hook it up that it'll be a problem even if you dead short it, but just so you know. Anyway, to mount this board in desktop mode, we're going to be using these four tiny standoffs and these screws. And this is also the way you'd probably mount it to in a case or on a board or something like that. The easiest way I've found to do it is by taking a screw pushing it through the screw hole and then just threading this guy onto the screw and with everything we're doing today it doesn't really have to be that tight because you know these are pcb boards so finger tight is generally fine so again we take the screw we push it through and i know it's not in focus but we just twist it on there until it's stuck and done and we do that for this guy and well that's it i always advise to hover the bo boards above the surface although this board doesn't have any components on the back the power 7 and the power 7 hc do um still there's exposed contacts and stuff like that so these one centimeter m3 standoffs easily make it hover above uh, the surface and because there's so much copper in there there's actually very little flex in the board um 
this is also the method you'd use to mount it to a case or to a uh, in in a box or on a board or something like that basically you screw these into your case or your board or whatever you have and then you screw the board on top of those i'll be publishing articles with all the links and and dimensions and stuff like that that isn't up yet i think but that will come later so that's how you configure desktop mode as i call it now what if you have a second power board so let's say we also bought a power 7 and well we want that to be on top now again we get a baggie this time it's one baggie because it only has one pluggable screw terminal the one that goes over here and then it has integrated screw terminals and fuses and again there's a mix between 10 and 5 amps power handling for this one is the same only the hc has a higher power handling now let's say if you want to mount this in desktop mode, you basically do the same as we did here, and that is do the four mounting posts and uh, with the one centimeter standoffs. But now you have this and you want to expand. You say, okay, no, I want to put a board on top of there. Okay, you basically take the screw out and you take these four that we had before, with that screw terminal or that, that, that screw head, the one centimeter one and the longer one, you still put this on the bottom because that's how you mount it to whatever you're mounting it to or it's standing on your desk. And instead of screwing the screw in on top, you screw in the mount post with the screw. So we're going to do that real quick. Okay, now we have the four posts mounted. Now, if you're building this into a box, um, all the connections of the Power 5 are uh, reachable from the outside. The only thing that's hard is these terminals. Although you can still reach them, especially with a special tool. Uh, if you have the ability to screw in your power wires right now, I do so. Because the next step is very simple. You take the Power 7, you put it on top, and now we just put in the screws again. And that's basically it. That will, ooh, well, I have to watch out with that. <laughs> I always do that myself. But that is basically it. That will complete the stacking and actually also creates a very strong ground connection between the boards so that if you're using multiple power supplies, uh, even if you're using different voltages and things like that, uh, that'll automatically all work perfectly. So that is how you stack a power board. Because now we, let's refocus that. Now we have a power seven on top and we have the power five on the bottom. And as I said, and especially if you're only using power fives, uh, because it uses these pluggable terminals, that's very easy to plug in and you can just, you know, wire it up before you plug it in and then plug it in like so. And even the fuses can be reached if you really want to replace it like that. So without taking the stack apart, you can reach that fuse in there. It's, a, it's I know it's hard to see. And with a bit of finger finessing, I'm not going to do it right now on camera. You can even place it back. So power fives are great for stacking, but power sevens have their own purpose, especially in desktop mode. Or if you're building a box where you're not really going to be replacing cables anytime soon, it's not that big of a deal. You can't reach it immediately. Right. So that is stacking power boards. But now, okay, let's uh, take this back apart again and build it back into a desktop mode board. All right, we've uh, reconfigured and we're now in uh, what I call desktop mode. So just the little standoffs on the bottom. So it's not touching anything on the, uh, the surface we're putting it on. And as you can see here, there's lots of exposed contacts and components and things like that. So 
you know, I'd always advise to levitate the board slightly, also in regards to heat handling and things like that. So we have a brain board we'd like to put on top. And if you've watched the other videos, you know it kind of goes on like this. But of course, uh, well, it comes with its own little baggie, or actually it comes with two little baggies. And that is, so brain board, it comes with pluggable terminals because we have all kinds of terminals here. All connections again are reachable from the side, including uh, the SD card slot and the power input and things like that. And it comes with a baggie with standoffs again, and actually 10 screws. Now I'll immediately show you why that is. Let's take our uh, power seven here as an example and our baggie of screws or a baggie of standoffs and screws. And again, everything is included that you need to run it in desktop mode or normal mode or stack mode or whatever you need, because it has five posts without anything on there, there. And then it has five posts with screws on there. Oh, and you can't see that. Right. And then it has those 10 screws I mentioned. So for now, we're not going to use those with screws on there again. Those are used for stacking, just like with the power boards. We are going to be using the 10 screws and these five standoffs. Uh, these are also two centimeters and these are uh, three or three and a half centimeters. Uh, I know I changed it at some point, but it doesn't matter for this tutorial. Again, we're going to be poking screws through, but now we're going to do so from the bottom to the top. And we're going to screw in those posts with two uh, female connections, so where the screws go into. Uh, and again, this time there is uh, five that we need to place. The outer four are ground, and the inner one is the, well, the positive voltage in that sense. And uh, these are not M3 standoffs or screws. These are M2.5. So they'll actually, the, 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 those big ones won't fit in those smaller holes, which is kind of logical, but yeah. Okay. So now we have those five standoffs in place, but we're still left with five screws. The reason for that is because you simply oh, place this one on top and then screw it in. And the way I like to do it is I like to screw in the top one. Let me try and focus that. The middle one first, but I don't uh, turn it completely. And then I do one of the sides. Don't do it completely because there could be a little bit of tension on it. And then I do one of these sides and this one I can do completely because I know the board's not going to twist anymore. And then I can go back and tighten these. And there we go. That is a uh, brain board mounted on top of a power board. And it doesn't matter what power board this is. They all have the exact same screw positions and mounting holes and things like that. Okay, so now we, well, okay, now we want to stack a brain board. We bought another one because we need more channels or more total LEDs. Okay, well, it's pretty easy. It's kind of the same as with the power board. We basically have to undo these screws again. And this time, let's be smart before we undo all of them. We put in some of the posts already. And those again are included with your brain board. And um, well, when we have all the standoffs in place, we just put on the board and screw it in the same way again. So do the middle one first, but not completely. And then do the sides. And there you go. Now we have two brain boards on top of a single power board. And this actually makes an interesting combination because each of these brain boards has eight output terminals. And as I said, you get uh, all the, uh, the terminals included in the baggies too. So for instance, the two output terminals are the four way ones. They just plug in like that. 
and you know and because of q power post which runs through this middle post we're getting power from the brain board so as long as the brain board is powered these two uh, sorry, sorry as long as the power board is powered these two brain boards will also automatically be getting power and if you want to run a more advanced configuration for instance you hook up uh, one of the boards to a relay like that one or both um, then you can use a USB-C input for instance to keep that board al alive uh, it's actually turning on there we go um, for when the power board is off and then the stack isn't energized anymore but this one still is or well if you want to run both of them you can uh, you know give both of them standby power whatever you want to do in that sense right so um i think that talks about most stacking configurations that will happen there's one consideration to make if you're stacking two power boards and you want uh and you're connecting two power supplies and you want both well, okay that doesn't look great anyway you want both to be able to deliver power for the q power post so that's that middle pin again the only thing you need to do is you connect the power boards together using their standoffs that's fine you don't need to connect uh these on the power between the power boards you can if you want to but you don't have to as long as between the power boards also this middle post of the m 2.5 standoffs is connected that will be delivered in the power board package so you'll have four uh, m3 standoffs and one m2.5 standoff that is for this middle pin over here which is the positive voltage you are allowed to run multiple power supplies in a stack of multiple voltages even and you can mix and match and whatever you want there but if you want multiple power port power boards to feed your q power post stack you'll have to make sure that all boards are connected using that middle pin hope that makes sense so that is power board stacking brain board stacking because you can also stack them without a power board if you wanted to you can even make you know a stack of power boards and a stack of brain boards if that fits in your enclosure better or something like that that's what these uh these, these orange plugs are for on the board where you can see those uh this output can feed these inputs basically if you don't want to use q power post um, speaking of q power post there are limits uh, if you're running 5 volt it's advised to run a max of three brain boards if you're running 12 volt power boards it's advised to run max uh, six brain boards and if you're running 24 volt the max is i believe 12 brain boards but then we're talking about a stack this high so i'm not sure that makes sense anyway um and well that's it this is a quick introduction to how to stack your power brain or combination of those boards i hope most of that made sense as always there's going to be more documentation on the website that's still being partially made but a lot of it is already there and well i hope you're excited we're still trying to get these out uh, it might slip past the second week of october but we're really really close but you know there's a lot to deal with so stay tuned and i'll certainly let you know when these are available uh, on the discord and of course here on youtube and well i hope you're ex as excited for these as i am i hope to see you back in the next video thanks for watching bye-bye